small pox small pox are uh, another type of disease that are caused by the viruses and in this section that is the second section of our lecture we are going to discuss about three types of diseases that are basically eruptive diseases that consist of some kind of skin lesions that are uh, basically uh, highlighted by their feature and can be seen very easily and can be differentiated very easily as well so in this section that is the second section of our lecture we are going to discuss about three types of diseases the smallpox the monkeypox and finally the herpes virus so in this section we will be discussing about their pathology their characteristics their clinical features and how they are dangerous and even their complications so starting the section with the smallpox smallpox is a highly contagious exanthematous viral infection produced by variola virus a member of family pox verity okay now smallpox the first thing that it is highly contagious and the second thing that it produces exanthematous viral infection that means that some type of exanthem infection is caused uh, that is basically involvement of the skin and formation of some type of rash and some type of papules on side on the surface of the skin and the third thing is that it is produced by the variola virus the type of virus that causes smallpox is the variola and it belongs to the family pox variety so this was all about the introduction of the uh, smallpox or the variola virus now coming towards the epidemiology the first thing is that the vaccination of the disease or the against the virus was discovered by the Edward Jenner and the first uh, successful vaccination was performed by Edward Jenner. The, uh, then we have that the last case of the um, uh, smallpox was seen in the Somalia in 1977 and after that only the case for cases of uh, basically affecting the humans were only observed because of the laboratory acquired infections uh, not from the any other outside source or any uh, other type of environment then the last thing is that on the may 8 1980 who declared the world free from smallpox or the smallpox are eradicated from the world and that was because of the efforts of the Edward Jenner who basically discovered the vaccination against the very dangerous and epidemic disease. Okay, now geological factors you can say the causes. The first thing that we are going to discuss it is the uh, spread of the infection. It spreads via the aerosols of infected saliva. The same thing that I have discussed so many times before that with the saliva, this uh, droplets of saliva contain the large amount of the virus that are replicating inside of them. So if some other person is exposed to that infected saliva, he or she can get the smallpox as well. Okay, now viral titers, uh, viral titers, this terminology basically means the volume or the amount of virus that is uh, present at this, that specific uh, point of time. So it is the highest in the first week of infection. Now, whenever the person is infected with the smallpox virus, the amount of a virus or the amount viral titer is highest inside that person in, during the first week of the disease. And then finally, types of smallpox uh, that are caused by two types of viruses. So according to that, they, we have types of uh, smallpox viruses. So the first one is the variola major and the second one is the variola minor. Highly susceptible, highly stable remains infective for long periods outside the human host. This is basically the... Uh, you can say characteristic of all types of viruses, but it varies uh, depending upon the uh, structure of the virus and its type. So this type of virus that is the variola virus is very stable and can uh, survive outside the human body for a long period of time. Okay, now coming towards the pathology, that is the most important part of the section. 
The first thing that takes place is the skin vesicles that show cellular necrosis scars area of ballooning degradation. Okay, the lesions or the sign and symptom first starts to occur on the surface of the skin that show us some type of cellular necrosis and the scars ballooning of degeneration. Then vesicles can uh, are not only present on the skin of the person but they can be present inside the person such as on the palate, in the pharynx, in the trachea and in the esophagus. Not only over here but they can also be present in the intestine, in the liver, in the <coughs> uh, inter intestinal nephritis and in the severe diseases. Now all of these involvements takes place later in the disease when it is not controlled and it is not treated and diagnosed in time. So these severe complications basically are caused by the variola virus. Okay, now what usually happens, the first step that takes place that it gains is its entry through the respiratory tract. From there, the variola travels to the lymph nodes of the person and inside the lymph nodes, it, it uh, starts to replicate. So the area for the replication uh, in these type, this type of virus are the lymph nodes. And from lymph nodes, it starts to, uh, to, transfer, uh, to transfer inside the blood of the person. And as we talk about bacteremia in case of bacterial infection, whenever the virus reaches the blood uh, supply of the person, it is known as the uh, viremia. So after its replication inside the lymph nodes, viremia follows. And from that, clinical manifestations uh, begins abruptly with malaise, fever, vomiting, headaches, and of course the uh, eruption of these papules on the skin so this is all the all about the pathology of the disease now clinical features the first thing is a characteristic rash that you can see on the palate of the person who is infected on the skin of the person inside the pharynx inside the epiglottis and so many more the rash that is produced inside the in the disease is most prominent on the face of the person and on the hands and the forearms and for remains there or starts from the two to three days after the infection after that from this uh, face from the skin and from the forearms the uh, skin rash travels to the uh, lower extremity and rash spreads centrally on the trunk it means that it basically with time it covers whole of the body of the person <clears throat> Now, first of all, the rash appears as a macule uh, and first of all, a papule, then to macule and then to the postular uh, vesicles. This is basically the stepwise formation of a postule. And then after that, all of the process, the body has gone through all the processes that first it has started on the face as a rash, then on the forearms, on the hands, then on the trunk and on the, uh, on the legs. Then they transform from papule to macule and then uh, to the postule and then the healing process starts and after three to four weeks. Healing process starts after three to four weeks. So the duration of the disease and the infections and the skin rash that stays on the body are for two to three weeks. Okay, now this was all about the smallpox. Now coming towards the monkeypox. First, we are going to discuss about the definition of the monkeypox, a little bit about the uh, infection or the agent that is causing the disease. A rare viral disease occurring mostly in the central and the western Africa, uh, more recently in Sudan, is only remaining potentially fatal infection of human to be caused by the member of pox variety. Okay. Now, first of all, that it is a very, uh, rare disease was common in the Central and the Western Africa and the latest case is seen in the Sudan and it is the only last uh, potentially fatal infection that belongs to the family pox variety. Okay, now coming towards the epidemiology or the spread of the disease, it was first isolated from the monkey as the word uh, you are uh, seeing that the name of the disease is monkeypox that is derived from the monkey. More prevalent in the rodents and the endemic areas. Now outbreak of the monkeypox occurred in the seven states of US in 2003. This is to be noted here. 
and dormice and squirrels are said to be the natural host of the monkeypox or that specific family of the pox variety and human to human transmission is uncommon it transmit it is transmitted from animals to humans okay now coming towards the clinical features of the disease the first thing is fever that is followed by headache lymphadenopathy that is the uh, basically you can say inflammation of the lymph nodes because inside the lymph nodes these viruses are uh, replicating themselves so that's why inflammatory infiltrates move towards those lymph nodes leading to lymphadenopathy malaise that is the feeling of weakness and muscle aches and these type of pustules are usually caused by the uh, monkeypox incubation period inside the human is for the 12 days almost and within 1 to 3 days after the onset of fever a uh, papillary rash occurs on the face and on the body parts as we have seen in our diagram pre in the previous slide and ultimately crust and falls off this is the ultimate fate of these papillary rashes that occurs on the face and on the body illness typically lasts for 2 weeks and in africa case fatality is as high as 10% because of the more exposure to the natural reservoirs of the disease that are the squirrels and dormice now coming towards the last the last virus or the last disease of this section that is the herpes virus the virus family herpes virus uh, herpes variety includes a large number of enveloped dna viruses uh, many of these uh, many of which infects humans okay now uh, herpes variety is a whole family and it has so many viruses inside of it and uh, out of those viruses so many of them infect specifically human beings okay so uh, most important pathogenic hhv that is the human uh, herpes viruses the first one is the varicella zoster virus we are going to discuss this virus uh, in the next section in so much detail then we have herpes simplex virus 1 and 2 this is also going to be discussed later in this uh, lecture then we have human uh, herpes virus 6 that is the cause of rosiola and then we have human herpes virus 7 that is the cause of exanthema uh, subitum and then finally finally the human onco virus causing uh, kiposi sarcoma so herpes virus is a large family it has these following types of viruses uh, and these viruses we are going to discuss in the lecture in so much detail So in this section we have talked about three types of viruses the first one was the smallpox the second one was the monkeypox and finally these different uh, types of viruses that are included in the herpes uh, uh, variety family so this was all from this section thanks for watching scardia.com